Previously on De La Plants. Hello everybody and welcome to part four of building my greenhouse. The leaves are changing and I honestly just think it's so cool that throughout the process of working on this greenhouse we've seen spring, a full summer, and now fall. But I just wanted to start off with like all these beautiful colors in the background because it is just so nice. So last time you saw me was just a few days ago and I had just finished up with the electricity. We closed back up the trench and now we are going to work on closing up this last wall and getting the fans and exhaust fans and everything installed so that the electrician can come back out and do all the final fixtures or wiring in the greenhouse. But there is one last like super cosmetic thing that I need to do for the exterior and that is install corners on the corner so let me show you what they look like right now so as you can see we have this area where two pieces are meeting up this is a corner so what i need to do is put a piece of trim right here to sort of lock in all of this so that number one it's not like flopping around we did have screws in here as you can see but those would be in the way of the corner pieces so we removed them and we're going to be installing a corner piece that goes the length of the building and this was one of the most frustrating elements of this project there's definitely been many moments where i'm like throwing the towel i give up so the plastic siding and the plywood siding are different thicknesses so we needed to figure out a way where we could have a solid piece because i think visually a solid piece would look so much better and so i purchased initially i purchased wood to do this and then I just, there was too big of a gap. I didn't really like the way that it looked. So I ended up going to Menards. Oh my gosh, the birds are very loud and the bugs. Anyway, I went to Menards and I found a product that looks like this. So this is a basically prefabricated corner molding for your buildings. This is made out of PVC, so it'll never rot. And it's currently white. It also has a little bit of like fake wood texture on it. So it's currently white and we did put it up to the building to see what that would look like if it was white. And I did not <laughs> like the way that it looked. I was in the process of picking out paint pretty much the last time I saw you. So this one is satin espresso and this other one is satin dark walnut, I think. <laughs> Did I read that correctly? Yes, satin, satin dark walnut. But the one that I ended up going with is the satin espresso, the lighter brown, just because I was thinking that I wanted to match the corner piece to be closer to the same color as the siding, but the siding pulls so red that I couldn't find... Um, I couldn't find a spray paint that was like a brown with lots of red undertones unless I purchased like a straight up burgundy spray paint. I've been looking around at like all of the houses as I'm driving past them and a lot of them do have contrasting colors on the corners. I mean, my house specifically is like an off white and then the corners are brown. So I think it's relatively normal for the corners to be a bit darker than the building but it's less normal for the corners to be like stark white when the building is so dark. I don't know, I just really didn't like the way that that looked. But let me show you what all of the options look like on the corner, just in case you're curious. So there's white down here. Then we have the espresso, and then we have the walnut. I think out here you can see that color difference a bit easier between these two. So they're already cut to the right length, and so I just need to spray paint them now and put them back in the corner that they're supposed to go in. So because these PVC corners are essentially plastic, you have to do a little bit of prep work when it comes to painting them. So what I did was I sanded them with 220 grit sandpaper just to get off that shiny layer and get them a little bit more gritty and ready to receive paint. And then I wiped them down with 100% acetone. Basically, I just took this from my nail kit, so I, I hope that was the right thing to do. But hey, it seemed to work out pretty fine. <laughs> I was able to then spray paint them, and I used 
a total of two cans of spray paint. I think it was actually maybe like a can and a half, but it stuck really well and through many, many storms and rain and all of the, all of the seasons that we've experienced since I have not finished this video yet, they've been perfect and I really love the way that they turned out. The installation process was also pretty simple. Basically what we did was there was still a gap in the polycarbonate side of things. So we just took little extra strips of polycarbonate. As you can see, I'm cutting one here and we sandwiched that under <laughs> horribly unflattering angle. Thank you, Daniel, for that one. Uh, we just sandwiched that underneath the PVC corner where the polycarbonate was and that filled the gap really well. And then we were able to install all of them pretty seamlessly. And before we were able to install the front ones, we obviously had to install the front panels, which honestly made this greenhouse feel complete. It made it feel completely closed in. It was the last wall that needed to go up and it was just the greatest feeling to get that in. This one, like the front is a little bit different because we have the door opening. So we are going to completely like chop off that bottom section, but that's not gonna happen until later. And here is a little, comedic relief moment for you. <laughs> I'm not even on. Son of a <laughs> We can redo it if you want. It's not genuine if you want to. Okay. Hi, this is Becca Dell Plants <laughs> coming into you live from uh, the greenhouse. Uh, so how are you feeling right now, Becca? Pretty good, a little warm. A little warm, yeah, fair enough. You look like you're dressed pretty warm and the sun's out and does not don't look like a good combination. But hey, you know, I, I'm, I don't judge, all right? Now, um, let's see here. You, you feel like you're gonna be done today pretty soon? Uh, I hear your, your, your workers are getting tired. <laughs> 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 hey, man, I'm just, I'm just reporting what they're telling us and, uh, you know? Well, we're gonna work till the job is done. Oh, all right. Well, the the workers are now talking about going on strike. They just told me we just got just in. Uh, so uh, you know. All right, the workers can go get the U channels. Workers are putting up a roll of tape right now. So, uh, okay. Okay, I've got the brick and it's really pretty. I love all of the varying colors and textures and shapes sometimes. Unfortunately, it was a pretty negative experience getting the brick. The person I bought them from was really bothered that I don't have a man helping me with this and wanted to let me know that men are stronger than women and I really should be having a man help me because you know, if I want to do it right, I'm going to have to use tools and blah, blah, blah. And I'm really mincing details here because I don't want to put out like negativity. But I will say that it was like probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had with a man. <laughs> it was really horrible. And it, the worst part is, is his son, who was around my age, was just watching and like letting this happen anyway we don't we don't need to bring in that negativity in here but this is just like another reminder to women out there that you are capable and it is nice to have like strong people help you but those strong people don't have to be men just saying like i don't know it's just really annoying that people like that see women as like little things that are incapable of doing anything it's just annoying and it's demeaning and it's not fair so anyway that aside, just want to say, women, you are capable and you can freaking do this. And if you are not the stereotypical or like, you know, typical person to do construction work or to be building things, don't be deterred by people like that. You should still do it and freaking prove them wrong and show them I can do this on my own and I don't need you. Again, of course it is nice to have help from men, but clearly the greenhouse would not be up if it wasn't for, you know, my husband's help, my grandpa's help but I don't know. There's no reason to discourage people from doing things just because they're not a man. Anyway, okay. More than I wanted to say, but I just had to get that out. Okay, so somebody's actually coming to my house right now to consult on new flooring for the upstairs of my house. 
So I got back just in time. When I'm done with that, hopefully that will only be like 30 minutes tops. I will be able to come out here and unload all of this brick and hopefully have it done because I need to return this trailer by 2.30. And it's currently 11, so hopefully 12, one, two, that's three hours, three and a half hours. We'll have to see. I'll keep you updated. Started to lay them down and because the ground is already level, I'm just sticking them right on top of the landscape cloth. I'm doing a pretty traditional, just like brick situation. And I thought about doing like at the ends, having one of, having like a row like that to like cap it. But I feel like I'm gonna have to do a lot more cutting. I don't know. I kind of just want to make it as simple as possible while knowing that if I wanted, I technically could configure it differently in the future because I'm just literally setting them down. Like I'm not really gonna have to worry uh, too much about them moving cause I'm gonna pack them in super tight. But anyway, I am going to have to like not do it in the spots where these four by fours are, but because the bricks are the same height as the four by fours, as you can see, it's not gonna be a big deal. So what I'm probably gonna do is like cut this landscape cloth here and then tuck it under on both sides or like, you know, just tuck it down and cover it with the brick. But as you can see, they have like writing on it and you can't see it too well. I'm kind of glad that you can't see it very well because it's kind of obnoxious, but it says Missouri block Moberly. Moberly, oh, here's my phone. Moberly is a town just north of Columbia. They said that they sourced these from, I believe they were initially used for ground like streets and then they um, were picked up and used for buildings. This one, these came from a school, I think they said. So they like demolished parts of the school and there was a bunch of these bricks sitting in the rubble and they just encouraged people to come and pick them out. So he said that his wife sat there with like a chisel and like chiseled off all of the mortar. Um, some of them do still have a little bit, but I like, again, I like the color variation. So. I'm gonna set you up here and we're gonna see all the fun angles that I can get <laughs> of this process. It's done. I think that took me about, let's see, maybe like an hour and a half, two hours-ish. So I was expecting it to take a while, but that was a lot faster. 
I have an hour until I need to go drop off the trailer, but I'm probably just gonna leave now because um, I just want it to be done. So yeah, my back hurts a little bit, but I made sure I was lifting with my legs. <laughs> so hopefully we will not have too much soreness. Um, anyway, yeah, it's done. Shout out to the man that told me I couldn't do this without a man. I am going to have to go back for more. I don't know if I'm gonna go back or if I'm gonna send Daniel, who knows? But I basically need to cover like half of this last one. And because the four by fours are here, I didn't move the um, landscape fabric, but because the four by fours are here, there's like, you know, it's kind of like a weird gap. So I'm going to take a piece of wood and like put it along this because you can see that it's like kind of crooked and I'm gonna push it so they're all pushed up as far as they can go once I move this landscape fabric. And I think I can fit another row into each of these sections, but currently there's about 55 bricks per section. So I might need another 55 just depending on that, but I don't wanna put too much into this section, maybe like two feet into this section because the bench is gonna be right here. I'm gonna have a bench. So underneath the benches, I am going to put rock just because it's a lot cheaper than these bricks. So it would have been cool to brick the entire thing, but not at how expensive these were. They were 150 each. Originally, they were gonna sell them to me for $4, but because I, $4 each, but because I was buying so many, they sold it to me for less. <sighs> but yeah, I'm super winded. That was a lot of work, but I'm really glad it's done. And of course I still need to like trim them and I'm gonna put the like wood framing around it so that they don't like move side to side. And then I think I might put sand in between them. I'm not really sure. The gaps aren't big enough for rock, but probably sand if I wanted to, I could, but I don't even know if I'm gonna need to because this one right here is really tight because I put this piece of wood here to push it. And this like, I mean, they're like a little wobbly. So I think if I put sand, they just wouldn't be so wobbly. So that, that would honestly be nice because I don't want to be like tripping over the bricks all the time. <sighs> Mission accomplished. I feel really good about this. Hi guys. So it's a new day as you can tell and I'm out here right now and I'm going to start hanging up the fans because the electrician is coming on Thursday. Today is Tuesday and it's really exciting because, or I don't know if we'll actually hang the big fan this week. Um, I might wanna wait until the electricity is set up completely, but I'm gonna mark out where it's gonna go. We're gonna like build the stand for it because it's gonna go back there and it's really heavy. So we're gonna have to build like a structure to set it on. Anyway, um, I spent some time sort of finishing securing the roof because we had a really big windstorm and the end of the roof pieces were not screwed into the rafters because I just hadn't done it yet. And it was like flapping up and then one of the pieces got dislodged from the H channel. And so I had to fix that and then I put in all of the screws on the ends so that shouldn't happen again. But yeah, I'm out here now because I'm hanging up the fans and I don't exactly know what that will entail because I haven't opened them up from their boxes at all. So I'm gonna go grab that and we'll figure it out together. So this is the fan that I got. Let me get it better in frame, it's a little heavy. Okay, so this is the fan I got. It is an, an 18 inch fan that is actually made for horse areas. So oh, I got it from Valley Vet Supply and that was a, a recommendation of my friend Jeff who um, works in the plant industry. He owns a nursery. So he told me to get that because if it's meant for animals, it'll be a lot cheaper for some reason, there's like an extra charge. Like people will charge more if they know that you're using it for plants. It's like being a woman and like women's clothing being more expensive or whatever. A lot of people have been asking me to talk more about like the ventilation of the greenhouse. I am going to have four of these 18 inch fans going. I'm going to have an exhaust fan, which is like a big unit that has like a thermostat on it. So that will keep the air moving. So whenever the greenhouse gets too hot, it'll turn on and it'll start you know, moving the air and cooling it down. And then on the opposite side of that big exhaust fan, I'm going to have a like flap system. So basically it's a vent that will just open. And I don't know exactly if I want to get 
a solar opener yet. I think that I probably will. And then I need to order a flap piece for the actual exhaust fan. And if you saw in a previous video, I was trying to find the right thing. And I had to order something in order to figure out what I was actually looking for, but I finally figured it out. So I think that I'm gonna use that information and order the correct item because the exhaust fan needs to have a flap vent. And with the power that the exhaust fan like pulls, it'll open it up whenever it turns on. And then as far as heating goes, I have a propane gas heater and it also is hooked up to electricity, but you can, if the power goes out or something, you can hook it up to a generator instead, but it needs electricity to like function, but the heat is actually being produced by propane. So I'm gonna see how it goes this first year. I don't exactly know like if it's gonna be super efficient or if I should just get an electric heater. I'm gonna feel out the first year, but pretty much everybody told me not to get an electric heater because it is extremely expensive and just like not as efficient as like, for example, a propane heater would be. So yeah, I don't know how much propane it's going to take and I'm hoping not too much, but we're just gonna have to see. So that's sort of my plan for heating and cooling. And um, yeah, so I've got openings, I've got fans that are going to be circulating the air, but if you, I'm pretty sure there's calculators online where you can put in your cubic square footage or something like that, your, <laughs> not cubic square. Well, yeah, no, cubic square. Anyway, you can put the dimensions of your greenhouse in or your building, and then it'll tell you like how much space you have, and then you can um, use that information to get a piece of equipment that will be comparable to the size of your building. So it's, I think the heater is rated in like BTUs or something like that. And to be honest, I don't really know what that means, but based on the measurements of my building, the heater that I got is like double what I need actually. So it should be totally fine. I don't think that it's gonna be running all the time. I think that it's going to be relatively easy to heat it with that um, heater. And I'm hoping that that's the case because it does get very cold here. And with the positioning of the trees and how low the sun is, I don't know how much like super direct light the greenhouse is going to be getting. I mean, this is where it's like November right now, like midday and the sun is only like this um, degree. I don't know, I don't know what that would be, but it's not where it would be in the summer, which is like probably like right here. You know what I mean? So the, so the sun is a lot lower and there is a big tree line right here. So I do worry about the trees covering up the sunlight. So it's just something that I'm considering, like I might have to work a little bit harder to heat this. <sighs> Heating and cooling rant aside, let's, let's unbox these and see what it is going to be to <laughs> install them. Okay, so basically I'm going to go need to get um, a hex drill bit. So I don't know what size this is. It didn't say either. So I'm just gonna go like poke around in the toolbox and see which ones it would be. And it just looks like you screw this up into your wood. Okay, I figured it out, or really, I brainstormed with Daniel and we decided possibly a crescent wrench would do the trick and it is the trick. So I pre-drilled a hole actually a little bit so that I could at least like sit the bolt in there. And now I'm just using this to hold it while I screw it in. It's not going anywhere, uh, but the bolt is a little crooked, so. Let's do the next one. Good morning. Okay, so we're out here right now. Um, the fans are all up. That was finished last night. And what I'm doing now is building the platform for the exhaust fan to sit on. So it is going up in this corner here. And basically the exhaust fan is a two by two box. And I just need to frame out basically a stand for it that's two feet wide, two feet tall. I mean, two feet wide, two feet long. And yeah, basically it's just going to offset the weight of the exhaust fan. There's like no framing up there to hold it. So we're sort of creating the framing to hold it.
winter has arrived overnight and it is very cold as you can see from the outfit. <laughs> and we're like, shoot, we need to get this done. The first thing we did in our mad dash to quote unquote finish the greenhouse, which we did not finish the greenhouse in this day, we framed out the front door. And if there's one thing in building and construction and remodeling that I can tell you that is absolutely the worst, it is installing doors. It truly, it is the worst. <laughs> it's so hard to get them to hang correctly and close right. We did this for two days and it was hell. And the reason why it was so hard was because the land is not perfectly level anymore. So we kind of built the building on a very slight slope to accommodate that. But then the door, we were trying to install it at that same slope so it wouldn't look weird and it just did not work out. So we ended up installing the door perfectly level. So if you ever notice that the door looks crooked, it's actually the only thing that is perfectly level on the building. <laughs> just a little bit of De La Greenhouse trivia for you. But the next thing I did in this you know, mad dash to finish the greenhouse was since the door was in, I was able to finish installing the front panels of the front face of the building. So we didn't know how wide or narrow the door was going to be. So we kind of just put stuff there in its place just, you know, to close it up. And so now that we know, we're able to put on the new belt boards and the plywood, which you can see, I kind of set up a little jig here to cut straight. It worked like 80% of the way through and then I had to take it off and just like hope for the best, which was fine. I mean, it definitely helped me keep a straight cut over this like long piece of plywood. I usually would not cut it straight because I just, I'm really bad at cutting things straight. Just my, my eyeballs do not do that. I don't know why I do have astigmatism. I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but I'm going to say it does. <laughs> so yeah, since these pieces were stained after the fact from the rest of the building, they are going to look a little bit more red for a while until they get a little bit more seasoned. And then hopefully they will look like they match a little bit more, but yeah, just enjoy this little building sequence. It's been a really long time since I've been out here because life happens. <laughs> it's a sunny day today. It's like in the 50s and it feels so warm. I actually am like extremely overdressed. So I'm really excited to be out here again working on the greenhouse. I am basically today just going to like look around and see what I've left behind and bring in some wood that I left outside this entire time. Hope that it's not like ruined. And then um, start planning for the benches because the benches still need to be built. We still need to figure out the heating and cooling. It's a long story. Basically the heating and cooling has stressed us out to the point where we just kind of stopped <laughs> for like a couple months because I think the last time we worked on this was probably October. And then the holidays happened and then it got really cold. So that's kind of an explanation of why there was such a big gap in this video. But I'm ready to be back out here and figuring this out because seed starting season is just around the corner, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, we need to start figuring this stuff out so that I can actually use the greenhouse for what I built it for. I wanted to say that I'm so pleased with the fact that the entire greenhouse on the inside is completely dry. Nothing is wet, which makes me very happy. It's like a, a seal test, you know, to make sure that all the seals were 
<laughs> good and everything. Um, and it's actually pretty warm in here. Like I said, I'm like very overdressed. I'm gonna take off this jacket. But it feels super warm in here, which is great news. I mean, it is sunny and it's a greenhouse, so that's normal. But I should have brought out a little temperature gauge, but I bet you it's like 65 degrees in here-ish. Like it feels like my house, if not a little warmer than my house, honestly. So everything stayed dry which is really good news. The roof was put on correctly. The siding was put on correctly. Um, it has snowed several times and rained a lot. And the snow does take a little while to fall off the roof. I noticed with like one of our big snows that we had, but I think that the greenhouse was actually warm, like being heated to like 70, 80 degrees, like it will be. That will, maybe not 70 or 80, maybe probably like, 65 to 70 well, depending but I think that if it was warmer inside of the greenhouse it would have slid off and melted a lot faster um, I don't know we're just gonna have to see long term how that goes but the roof is made with two by sixes so it is made to withstand a lot of weight from snow it was something that we thought about in the planning process which I'm very grateful today because it's already come in handy and I've never felt like structurally unsure about the greenhouse. So anyway, let's bring in this wood and figure out where we're at with, with everything. <laughs> wood cleared out and I wanted to update you on the brick flooring because this has been a big roadblock as well so basically my initial thought was that I would be able to cut the brick with my circular saw or my miter saw because I've seen other people do it I was doing a lot of research on like cutting brick I thought that if I had the right blade I'd be able to do it and then I actually tried it and um I don't think that that would be a smart thing to do. So basically it just, my tools I don't think are powerful enough for these specific bricks or possibly any bricks. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I don't have a way to, uh, whenever you're cutting tile or brick or anything like that, like a ceramic, you wanna make sure it's wet so that it isn't getting too hot. And if I'm using my traditional power tools, I don't know if I can get it wet and I don't really want to because I don't wanna ruin my tools. So I know now that I have to rent a tile saw or something like that. I'm gonna bring in the brick to the place where I rent tools and be like, what do you have that can cut this? Because until I have that figured out, I can't finish the brick flooring. And we're actually just gonna hold off on the rock until spring comes because it's just too cold to be hauling around rock and like we'll have a few days where it's like in the 50s and that's really nice but then a lot of days it's like in the 20s 30s the 10s it's just very unpredictable and i know that i don't want to be doing that and i'm not going to ask daniel to do that if i'm not even willing to do that so yeah we're in a little bit of a pickle there it's not the end of the world by any means like at all I just need to be patient on the rock situation unless I bring them in like a bagged version. Like I'm thinking I'm going to have uh, a bulk delivery of rock. I could just buy a bunch of bags of rock and do it that way, but that would be, I think I calculated it and it would be like 900 bags, which is insane. Like, is that even like a thing? Maybe it wasn't 900, maybe it was 90. 900 seems like a ridiculous amount. I don't think it was 900. <laughs> anyway, it was just like a lot of bags and I'm like, I would not want to do that, but it would make it easier because we could drive the truck up here and then just start unloading. But again, I don't think that I want to do that. So we will see on that front. But what's more important is building out the benches and um, the heating and cooling, which again, we are procrastinating. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I have lost a little bit of my spark with this project. And I ended up watching this video so far like because I've edited as I've been going along. And it, it did motivate me to like continue and like come out here today. The next three days, I'm probably gonna spend a lot of time out here doing this. But it did motivate me for sure to like get back out here because I wanna get it done. I really do, but I did lose my excitement for the project, to be honest, just with it taking a lot longer than I thought. And um, 
you know, doing a lot of it ourselves and not having the, um, all of the professional knowledge that we would love to have. But you know what? We're doing our best. <laughs> anyway, so I need to quickly screw on this belt board and I was supposed to do this so long ago. I cut this piece of wood and it fits so nicely. It just sits in it, sits in that spot like on its own without me even doing anything. So I'm gonna quickly screw this on. I'm glad I still know how to do this. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished a big thing that I've been putting off. I put four by fours up on this seam here, and there's only one that I wasn't able to do, and that's because the electrician put a plug there, and uh, I just, I don't know what to do. I can put two blocks on either side, but with the way that the plug is shaped, it just makes it really hard, and either way, I'm gonna have a big gap there. So I might just do a two by four or something else. I don't really know what I'm gonna do, but it's that one. You can see very strategically placed in literally the worst place possible. Like you could have put it here. You could have put it here. You could have even put it up here, but you put it right there. Why? I think that we could move it technically. I would actually prefer that maybe even just like a couple inches lower. I'm gonna ask Daniel to do it and see if he can. Okay, it is time to start working on these benches. I picked up these things called rafter ties. This is what they look like, and basically you install them just like this. You put nails in these four holes, slip in your piece of wood. I've never installed these before, but I assume you wanna like squeeze the wood. <laughs> and this just helps it all stay on securely. That was so loud and took forever. Oh my gosh, that was not fun. My camera died yesterday and I was so focused on getting this done that I did not go get a new battery. But check it out, we have a third of the framing done for the benches. Basically from here, I'm just going to put a leg probably on every other piece because as you can see, I ended up putting a two by four on every single stud. And that is because I was realizing that this is a really big space to have between the, the top. And I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do for the top. I was thinking hardware cloth. I was thinking like that wire shelving that you put in closets. I really don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I wanted to make sure that it was as secure as possible. So I just went with it. And again, this is all scrap wood that I just had laying around. Uh, these were all off cuts from other pieces of wood. So I'm really happy that I was able to use basically what would have been trash. I mean, I would have used them no matter what, but you know what I mean? Like I didn't have to go out specifically and buy wood for this. And as you can see, only one of them has the collar tie. So I'm not going to be needing to do that. <laughs> I ended up putting a screw on top, a screw on bottom. And I think that I'm probably going to put a screw on either side as well, because some of them are like really secure. This one feels really good, but some of them 
just don't. <laughs> they wiggle a little bit more. So I do think though that once the legs are on and everything is more put together, because I'm also going to be putting, as I showed you, a piece of wood across the front like this. It'll go across the entire front. And I think that that will anchor everything really well, as well as obviously the leg that's gonna go down to the ground. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about the security of it all. If in the event it doesn't feel very secure, then of course I can just like add more screws and do more uh, to get it more secure. But anyway, that is where we ended up. And I'm feeling really good about this progress just in the last few days. It is still very messy. <laughs> there is lots of trash around here. And I was holding on to a lot of that stuff because I wanted to see if there was any possible use for it in the future. But I just don't think there is. So I am going to maybe do a little bit of research um, and then look into recycling them. And then I have lots of off cuts of wood that I probably would just burn uh, that I they're too small to use for anything and then this is just screws and supplies so hopefully once the benches are built I'll be able to start organizing things and uh, we will have the cooler and the heater installed up here this greenhouse has been such a journey for myself, for Daniel, for everybody who has been involved, for you guys, I'm sure. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has stuck around during this series. I know that the videos have come out sort of sporadically, but I'm trying to be kind to myself and remember that we've never built anything like this before. And this has been really challenging in a lot of ways, especially with other life events going on simultaneously. So I just wanna say thank you so much for being dedicated friends and just caring about my life and what we do here in this greenhouse. I'm so excited for the next episode where I reveal the final for now interior. The interior is going to be ever changing. Obviously it's a greenhouse, things are going to change, but I'm just really excited to show you guys what we end up with for now. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next part.